Hello, I'm Dr. Eileen Hale, the COO of Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. TTELT is a program of educators worldwide. And today on our theme of assessments, we have a special guest with us to talk about rubrics as a form of assessment. Beth Trudell is one of our board members, which we're thrilled to have her share her expertise with us, and has also served as an English language fellow in Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Welcome, Beth. Thank you, Eileen. It's great to be here. Rubrics is a, one of my favorite topics. Well, we're so thrilled to have you share with us. So for someone who might not even know what is a rubric, how do you define a rubric? That's a great way to start. A rubric is an excellent tool for both teachers and students. Sometimes people think it's just for teachers, but it's for both groups. And for teachers, it's a grading tool for any classroom activity. It could be speaking, writing, presentations, um, and even peer review. Now for students, it helps them understand the expectations of a task and how it is graded. And that's very important. Also, it measures what students are doing well and what they could improve. And it even helps to track a student's progress, which is very motivating for the students. And it's given at the beginning of a task. So there are no grading surprises. You're not going to have a group of students outside your door saying, hey, I thought I got an A on this and you gave me a C. That won't happen. But the most important point to remember about rubrics is that it's objective and fair grading. When I think of the word rubric, I think of the word fair, and that is so important. We've all seen or heard about the uh, studies where a teacher has a stack of papers to um, grade. And by the time they get to the end of that stack, their energy and their thoughts on grading have changed. This makes every student, every paper get a fair grade. But it's more than just a grading tool. It's also a learning tool. It's great for the students because they learn how to evaluate their work. And so it sets them on the path to being independent learners. So it's not just an evaluation tool, it's a magic tool for students and teachers. That's a wonderful explanation. And I totally agree with you and really like the fact that you pointed out to use it in the beginning, not at the end, because how I've seen it traditionally used is that teachers uh, professors will use it to do the grading, but the students never see the rubric it, traditionally. So I really appreciate you pointing out the importance of sharing the rubric with the students ahead of the test, whether it's writing, written, whatever the test is, because exactly. that's essential that they, I've actually used that in my class and let them evaluate each other with it before the oh. actual in class. As I mentioned, peer review, exactly. It's a great, you, you need a guide for students to do peer review. If you let them on their own, they're going to do grammar and things like that. The um, Using a rubric during peer review is a great guide. I totally agree with you. So how do you create a rubric if you don't have okay. one to guide it? <laughs> um, it's not too difficult. Let's start, let's say you start with your objective, okay? So I'm gonna take a simple objective for an example. Um, students will be able to write a unified paragraph, okay? So the first step is, after you have your objective, is to create indicators or dimensions, I'm sorry, dimensions. Um, and all the dimensions are, are, it's breaking apart the task and putting it into pieces or parts. And those are the dimensions. So the first one for a paragraph is the planning tool. I wanna to evaluate my students on how they used a spider diagram or an outline. The second, of course, for a paragraph is the topic sentence. Then we have supporting sentences. Then we have the concluding sentence. What I like to include when I'm teaching a paragraph are transitions. So I also add the topic of transitions to the rubric. 
And you may, any teacher may want to add a grammar point. Maybe you've been working with the students on subject verb agreement or prepositions, and you wanna see how they're doing with that. So you break down that task and you have those dimensions. That's the very important second step, okay? That's really important. <laughs> I wanted to add as well, because I'm doing this right now with my students is you could add punctuation as a criteria, as mm -hmm. like capitalization for writing is really important. Exactly. Well grammar. Yeah. Exactly. There's if you've been working with something uh, with your students and they are expected to know it, you just can't add new information, obviously, to a rubric, but something you've been working with them as you have on punctuation, that's an important thing to add. So you have your objective, you have your dimensions. Next comes the grading scale. Now, this can be a very simple grading skill. There's usually four levels. It could be something like excellent, very good, good, um, needs improvement. Or it could be something like exemplary, competent, um, improving, um, beginning. So you can have, there's different types of these grading scales. The important thing is you're gonna put points with your grading scale. So maybe excellent, three points. Maybe very good, two points. Good, one point. Regrettably, no points for um, could improve. So you have your dimensions, the parts of your task. Then you have your grading scale and your points. The next thing that, is ha that happens is you need to describe those tasks, okay? And the way you do that is with something called indicators. You're just describing the task and that's what's important. So let's talk about describing those dimensions. I'm gonna take the example of supporting sentences. So you have your, um, your dimension supporting, supporting sentences and for excellent, it would be that there are three sentences that support or explain the main idea in the topic sentence. Again, we're looking for a unified paragraph and that means one idea per paragraph. So you wanna get that it, they support the main idea. <coughs> Excuse me. And then for very good, there are two ideas that support or explain the main idea that's in the topic sentence. And for good, just one idea that supports or explains the idea in the topic sentence. And for needs improvement, no ideas. Maybe they're talking about all different topics. So that's simply how you would explain the dimension supporting sentences. And that way it makes it very easy to grade and there's no debate about the grade because it's explicit in the instructions, if you will, within the rubric. So they know exactly what they're grading on. If they got the three, then they should get excellent. Now, the way to explain transitions. For excellent, the paragraph um, has three connecting um, words for the three supporting sentences. And I'm going to say in my rubric that it's unique. These are unique transitions. They are not first, second, third. So I'm trying to get my students away from the first, second, third. I want them using unique ones. And so excellent would be that each, each um, sentence is connected with a unique transition. And very good is it takes it to two sentences connected with unique transitions. And then the third is there is one unique transition and perhaps the rest are first, second, third or other transit or other routine ones. And then of course, the could improve no transitions. So unique ones meaning like therefore, however, nonetheless, those kind of transitions? Exactly, exactly. Moving away from first, this happened, second, this happened. Um, getting them into a more advanced writing style. Fantastic. But they know they're supposed to do that because they have the rubric. Yes. So 
our fun part. What does it look like? Okay. A rubric is a table, a table that you um, create on your computer, just like any other table. And this table has five columns, okay? Five columns and then rows across. In the first column, you have your dimensions, your planning tool, your topic, one under another, your topic, the um, supporting sentences, the concluding sentence, transition and grammar, or perhaps punctuation point. Okay, that's the first column. The first row has your grading scale. So you have excellent with the points, very good, good, could improve. So then going across, here's your planning tool. You go across and you do the indicators. What does it mean to get an excellent three points? What does it mean to get a very good two points? a good point or no points. And those are the descriptions of what the expectation is. So it's not difficult to write, okay? And it one of the tips I would really include is try and do this with other teachers. Work together, other teachers, because it's much more fun and, and I think you get a better product too. And remember, that when you list your dimensions, the parts of the task, you do them in order of importance or in order the way they come. I would never put grammar at the top of my list unless it's a grammar point. I'm looking at structure. I want some good grammar in there, but important ones first, okay? Great, that's fantastic. Any other final tips that you'd include for our listeners? I will say that I have three websites that um, we can use, and you will see these websites on the final um, slide. And these websites, Ruby Star is my favorite, and they have um, rubrics that you can use on so many unbelievable topics. And they have, like for an essay, they have a long list of dimensions and then you can click on the ones you want to include. It's a, I have used this over and over. And then there's iRubric, another good website. And then Education Northwest. This is a president of our board's favorite rubric site and it's traits and rubrics for K through 12. So those are wonderful sources that will really help you do this. And as I mentioned, try and do it with some other teachers, make your life easier. Use these websites, get help from your friends. I really appreciate those tips, Beth, and your expertise on this topic. And I concur also, if it's your first time, especially creating a rubric, create one for fun. And even if you do it on your own, share it with a colleague and get yes. their input because oftentimes you don't see something that somebody else will see from the outside. That's a great idea to get feedback. And also, um, I'm going to give you my email address, and it will be up to, um, but it's Trudell, T-R-U-D-E-L-L, 60 at AOL.com. And don't you all laugh about me still using AOL.com. Um, I've had it for years, and I stick to it. But please let me know if you need some help or if you need an example, and I'm happy to do that. Thanks so much, Beth. And for our listeners, uh, the websites will be in our show notes as well as Beth's email. Great. Thanks for your time tonight. We really appreciate it, Beth. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Follow us on our website, ttelt.org, for prior and new upcoming podcasts. Our Facebook, TTELT group, Instagram at t.ttelt, and Twitter at ttelt1. Thanks for joining us today.